a land of majestic beauty, a vibrant people with a nomadic heritage, some of the most unreached people on the earth. My name is Joanne. Growing up in America, the countries in the former Soviet Union appeared cold, unwanting of foreigners. But that was then. Just 15 years ago, Kyrgyzstan opened its doors to the rest of the world. It's the dawn of a new era. I've been hearing God is doing something new in Kyrgyzstan. As a writer and communicator, I'm going to visit the workers to get the real story. The moment I arrived, I was struck by their extraordinary hospitality and by the uniqueness of the people. People of Kyrgyzstan are just so welcoming and glad to have us here. People are open, friendly, curious. They're so hospitable, they're so open, and they love having guests. Through a friend of mine, I was connected to an Australian worker in the capital city of Kyrgyzstan. Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan are quite open for the gospel and it's also a platform to then go into the more closed countries from here. So there's a lot of church planters that go into Uzbekistan, there's a lot of uh, Bible school education where pastors come from Uzbekistan out to here, there's things into Afghanistan that go from here and also into northwest China, Xinjiang which is basically predominantly Muslim which is the hardest area of China to get into as well so it's a great base also for going out to even more unreached areas. This area really seems like it's in the centre. There's the Back to Jerusalem movement from China, Kyrgyzstan's in the middle of that. Then there's the emphasis on the Muslim world and Kyrgyzstan's in the centre of that. It's just an incredibly strategic place at this point in time. Kyrgyzstan is a country that is predominantly Muslim. Most people here are not so strongly Islamic by religion, but they are by identity. So how you pray, how you bury your dead, how you get married, the traditions that define the culture, are really strongly Islamic. With the entrance of the Soviet Union, Christianity ceased to exist in Kyrgyzstan. In the early 90s, an awakening occurred, and there was revival in the land. I was put in contact with a local Christian leader. He has been one of the major pioneers of local church growth in the past decade. And this house is the first house just believers had here a sign that said, prayer house for the all the nations. And in 1987, one missionary came here and started sharing the gospel. And that time was no Kyrgyz Bible, just sharing the stories. And I remember that experience, how it was like, uh, first time I heard in my language, people praying to God, just in Kyrgyz language. Already, Kyrgyzstan is being a light to the nations. Even it's like local Kyrgyz church is sending missionaries to outside the Kyrgyzstan, to China, other, other work ethnic Kyrgyz peoples. It's God is working. The Kyrgyz gained their freedom from the Soviet Union in the early 90s. Whenever a nation gains independence, we look back and see there were people who fought for that freedom, heroes of the land. During my time in Kyrgyzstan, I got to meet some of the heroes of today who are fighting for another kind of freedom. Since we've been here, and we feel like God has really blessed our family. He's allowed us to be a part of several ministries, and the, the primary one is just loving the Kyrgyz people. I came to Kyrgyzstan to help uh, work on homeless issues and bring awareness. The problem is that there used to be a Soviet uh, system of government. Now that the, the system of government has, has changed, so no longer do you have the same level of social services, and people that used to be very productive part members of society, um, now they run into hard times and now they end up being homeless. A large focus of my work is not just calling foreigners to come to Kyrgyzstan, but really challenging Kyrgyzstan, the Kyrgyz, to love the Kyrgyz. Когда вот, например, сначала они очень много внимания требуют, и когда вот с ним разговариваешь, надо побольше их слушать. И когда вот с ним слушаешь, слушаешь, и после начинаешь рассказывать свое и легче принимать да? и вот такие минуты мы стараемся рассказывать им про Иисуса бездомный человек да и когда ему поможешь он такой радостный и от радости они даже 
могут плакать тебя и все могут внутри, что у них есть. I think I feel God's heart, you know, because he says, you know, that he doesn't forget the poor and the needy. They want to help relieve their suffering. Возможно, нам кажется, что он при смерти, но если Бог захочет, он просто, оказывается, может его или ее поднять. In this homeless clinic that I have a chance to volunteer at, um, we've seen some homeless people come to faith because every week they come, we can pray with them, and there are people who preach the gospel to them. Да, многие вот задают мне вопрос, вроде ты молодой, и у тебя тоже специальный менеджер организации, да, и почему ты именно вот здесь ходишь, да? Я всегда вспоминаю, когда 2000 лет там назад был Иисус на земле. И стараюсь просто подражать его. Yeah, I mean that's really the main reason I do it is because I just want to serve God with everything that I have, and this is the opportunity that God has put in front of me, and so I just I said yes. These people are waiting and longing for someone to come and tell them you have a hope and a future. It is a pivotal time where God is raising up incredible people, incredible solutions. Yet there's still an incredible need for more. It's only in the last 10, 15 years that they've had the gospel. Uh, so it's just still one of the most needy places. There's villages all over the country, way up in the mountains, where people have never heard of Jesus the Messiah. We need a huge amount of prayer. We do need many foreigners volunteering and talking about Jesus, but also bringing all sorts of skills. There needs to be a lot more people. People of all professions. Um, I know a retired lawyer who's been coming out here for the last few years, who's been mentoring one local lawyer who's a local believer. People are looking for others to disciple them, to encourage them, to help them set up businesses, to help them plant uh, you know, better crops. Because many people here, I mean, they want to serve Jesus, but they don't have a way to make a living. For them to be bivocational is very tough because they spend 12 hours a day trying to find food just to live and survive. We continually need qualified or certified teachers, elementary up to middle school and high school. And the goal of like a lot of the missionaries and the people that are coming here are to let the Kyrgyz church put its roots down deep enough so that then even if the missionaries are sent out, the church will flourish and survive itself. A local guy said, it only takes three things to reach people in Kyrgyzstan. Your door always has to be open, you always have to have food on your table, and you always have to be there to greet them. Come and spend time and be with people. You don't need a big schedule, you don't need a big plan. God will show you what to do. The Kyrgyzstan needs really people, godless people, who can come and just love this nation. And people is open to, to hear that good news. Come and do what you're most passionate about and that's how you'll be effective. Go? I mean why wouldn't you want to go? What else would you be doing? You know, you might as well check it out. <laughs> don't be limited by your comfort zone, what you think you know. Um, don't be limited by what you think you can do. I felt quite inadequate for what I was coming into. I didn't know enough, but you never know enough. God has created a whole generation actually of people who like extreme things. That some of the least reached people left on earth are in the most extreme places. And so my parents would say it's the hardest places, but for me I think, ah, it's the coolest, most exciting, amazing place ever because I can't think of anywhere else I'd like to go more than those places. And we feel like God is saying we've been blessed, but it's a time to be a blessing. My time in Kyrgyzstan has been amazing, an eye-opening experience. God is definitely moving in Kyrgyzstan. 
It's a privilege to witness what God is doing these days. There are serious needs to be met. At the same time, there is great beauty to be celebrated. May both inspire you to have a heart for the Kyrgyz Muslims. God is saying, because I love the Kyrgyz nation, because my heart yearns for all its villages, I cannot remain silent. I will not stop praying for her until her righteousness shines like the dawn and her salvation blazes like a burning torch.